welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made my 1890s undergarments. I went with drawers and a chemise. Now the chemise, I'm actually really proud of how it turned out. Oh no, it's inside out. Okay, here it is. Here's my chemise, can you see it? I'll put in clips. Now my chemise, I made looking at primary resources. The first one that I attempted to draft from is from Needlework and Cutting Out by Agnes Walker and I tried making the pattern directly and it it didn't work so I got rid of that one and I just drafted my own based on some images that I saw of chemise advertisements from the late 19th century to early 20th century. So basically for the chemise I wanted a, a V V neckline and I wanted it to look really dainty but I also wanted it to be more durable since this is gonna, I'm gonna wash this. I decided on using this crocheted lace instead of uh, I don't know what the other what it's called but you know what I'm talking the softer lace this is more like durable in my opinion and I wanted it to be more utilitarian in purpose so I didn't add too much frills to it because I didn't want to add too much bulk to the bottom layer so I just added this all around which you can see in extant extant advertisements from that era and some garments the straps I took the two pieces of crocheted lace and then I hand sewed them together to make sure they were secure and also look very pretty. And you know I was actually kind of stumped of what to put on the front because I was thinking of maybe putting a bow or putting some insertion lace. Insertion lace was really popular so I was thinking of maybe doing that but I ended up going with the the V lace detail because I thought it just looked so gorgeous and I had just enough to do that so I thought it turned out pretty perfect. I mean if I was to change anything I'd maybe do um, insertion lace in this little this little piece right here because I saw some examples that did that as well but overall I'm extremely pleased with how the chemise turned out. Let's just go to the showstopper here, the the drawers. Now for the drawers I looked at multiple sources but I ultimately ended up going with the American system of dressmaking and it's this college textbook that explains how to do multiple different things and it's from... you know what I'll put it on screen because I don't remember right now <laughs> what, what it what year it's from. Oh, I forgot to mention, I used muslin for my chemise and my um, drawers. In this chapter it talks about muslin underwear, which I thought was really cool because muslin's one of the cheaper fabrics that you can buy if you're first starting out sewing. So I thought this would be really, maybe not beginner friendly, but pretty, pretty friendly to beginners because it's a moderately cheap fabric that you can buy at like a Joann's fabric store or any other fabric store. Actually I'm not sure about any other fabric store. I go to Joann's but um <laughs> but maybe it will work for you. Drawers. So for the drawers I used this chapter in making muslin underwear and they have this beautiful little diagram that I followed to a T. <laughs> Resulted in these I don't know if you can see them. These are split drawers. So you can use the bathroom. So I'm not going to go ahead and explain literally everything I did. I'll link the, the primary source which explains how 
far apart the measurements are and basically what they want you to do is make a make a square and then you mark certain points on the square and then you connect the dots and then you have the drawers pattern and for the drawers pattern um, I think it was something like five dots and then you just connect them because the back is a little bit higher than the front and then you have the leg I also used a ruler to make sure my lines were straight and everything so I'd recommend doing that I also used wrapping paper but it has one inch it has a one inch grid on it which I found very useful but that's not a necessity if you want to make these yourself I'll link the book in the description so you guys can look at it and if you want to recreate it you can well, the same process goes for the band because it just wanted you to make a square and then make the dots on the square and then connect them right and that's how you make the waistband although mine ended up being too big uh, I don't know how I'd fix that for the next time. I just wanted to try using the primary resource of how to draft your own and then make mine based on that. For the width, it's for a person with, I think it was like 25, 27 inch waist. And I mean, I'd put this over a corset, but I didn't know what my measurements would be. So I extended the front side of the the line which is what they said to do if your waist was a bit bigger or if your weight's a bit smaller you deduce that line make it shorter so the waistline is shorter because the pattern is supposed to be put on the fold of the fabric I didn't have enough fabric for my um, drawers so my solution to that was just shortening the leg and then making the bottom of the legs out of a different fabric and I finagled that so it turned out fine. So if you don't have enough fabric, recommend you do that. And I actually like how it looks than if it was just all the same fabric because it kind of splits up the design and makes it look a bit more ornate, even though that wasn't <laughs> intentional. But you know, that's that. And for the pin tucks, all you do is you just fold the fabric. You, well, you measure where you want to where you want to do your folds, but you measure where you want to do it. You fold the fabric. I ironed mine before I sewed it, but that's not necessary. And then you just sew a straight line and then you repeat that for how many intervals you want. They usually did a lot of pin tucks, but I already didn't <laughs> make extra room for the pin tucks, so that was kind of my mistake. But um you can if you want to. You can make a ton of pin tucks. That would be gorgeous. But, um, I made how many? I made four and then I spaced out the top one because I didn't want to look just pin tucks, pin tucks, pin tucks on the very bottom. I want it to be a bit more spaced out so I put one there. After that, I machine sewed on this lace because I couldn't be bothered to sew any more lace onto stuff because of the chemise I handed all the lace. So I didn't want to do that, so I just put it on a zigzag stitch and it turned out fine. And for connecting the legs together, the two resources that I used both said to use a French seam for that. So I did French seams on the, um, the legs, which turned out like this. They look very nice. I think it helps in case the lace so it won't fall apart. You know, well, that's my hypothesis to why they all said to do that, but I'm not entirely sure if that's right. And then for, um, I don't know how else to call this, but extended crotch, um, you do a piece of fabric and then you, you like encase it. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but you, you take a strip of fabric. I didn't do on the bias and it turned out just fine, so you don't need to do it on the bias. And um, you take it and then you pin it to the fabric, you sew it, and then you fold it over, and then you tuck over the side, and then you, and then you sew it. I think I hand sewed this bit. Yeah, I did. I hand sewed this bit. But the other part you could just sew on machine very easily. But you could do this whole thing on machine if you wanted to. I'm not. I'm not a judge. You can do what you want. For the waist, I gathered. I gathered the legs because the legs were obviously too big, which was the look back then, and that's how the pattern works anyway. 
So I gathered that and then I'm trying to remember how I did this because it was kind of weird and unorthodox how I sewed the waist onto the um, legs because the legs just had so much room. I kind of did like this weird rolly thing here to sew them on. It was kind of like a, I was like felding it almost, but it turned out more rolled than I would probably like. I don't know, if if you're going to make this add extra room to the bottom of the waistband probably to prevent that from happening. And then finally I ended up sewing a little bit of the the front, you know, where it sits where it sits on your waist and then I sewed up this bit to give it a bit more privacy and there were some examples that I saw that did that as well but some don't so it just goes up to personal preference of what you want to do and going to the back, going to the back I did one pearl button which I thought was really nice and I made the made the buttonhole which is kind of a pain since I'm not used to doing it on the machine and it kind of turned out a little wonky, but I hand sewed part of it to make it not wonky anymore. I don't know. I just gotta improve at buttonholes. I made the waistband a bit too large. It's supposed to have side seams and then you have the back, but for this I just um, made two little extra panels and felled and sewed them and all that. Then I added a button and that's how it closes in the back. Actually, there was another book. Home Dressmaking and Home Dressmaking by Annie E. Myers, she talks about um, using a pearl button. You know what, let me pull up the quote. Alright, Miss Myers says to use a medium sized flat pearl buttons for closings. So I did that. <laughs> so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Doo -doo -doo.